So to kick things off, um, I wanted to show you a first part of our Land Life film, um, which will give you an impression of what we do and why. Our beautiful planet gives us so much. Clean air to breathe, rich soils to grow food, but we have taken too much. And today, two billion hectares of the Earth's soils are degraded. Our planet is struggling, and now is the time for solutions. That's why Land Life is sustainably planting tens of thousands of trees in degraded soils, revitalizing ecosystems and communities all over the world. Short impression, there'll be more to come as we move on. Um, but basically, uh, firstly, I wanted to just introduce me and my colleague, Laura. Um, this is us enjoying nature, um, as I'm sure you have photo albums full of similar shots. Maybe not so much the one on the left. Uh, this is actually a little sneak peek of our product, the cocoon. Uh, this was me uh, in the winter of this year planting trees in degraded soils in Spain. And that's Laura who just climbed a mountain and had the hardest day of her life. Um, and we're here at the Sustainable Conference to talk about the cocoon, our product, and our bigger vision for the future of our planet. So nature is a big word um, and it sounds, you know, large and maybe not so tangible, but basically what nature is, is it brings us everything that we need to live. It brings us water to drink and live. Um, it brings us food, it brings us clean air, and above all, it brings us a lot of joy and happiness. Um, we need it very much, but unfortunately, the way we have been living, uh, nature is struggling. One of the greatest challenges of our time is land degradation. Uh, land degradation means the uh, disappearance of vital ingredients from the soils that it needs in order to be able to sustain life, basically. If you look at the map, this map of the world, um, you can see that the darker and red areas are severely degraded soils across the world. Um, at the moment, this is two billion hectares, which is about uh, the size of China and the Americas combined. So it's a huge area and it's growing every year. The consequences of soil degradation are varied and quite scary. Mass exodus, people's leaving their lands because they can no longer live off of them. Uh, soil erosion, food scarcity, and drought. But this is not a talk about doom and gloom. You hear enough of that. Um, actually, what Land Life Company is based on is a belief that we as a global community want a better future and that we are able to create this. So we are more focused on solutions um, because it's important to have healthy ecosystems in order for ourselves to be able to live. And it's time for us to get to work. We must remove all the plastics from the oceans and return the fish. We must take the toxins out of the air that don't belong there. And for us, very importantly, we must repair the degraded soils of our world. And this is the founding belief that Land Life Company was, was founded on. Um, we were inspired by tradition, traditional cultures. You see before you here uh, a clay pot, it's called the Ola irrigation system and it dates from more than 4,000 years ago. Um, cultures in China and beyond have been using this system for that many years. It's basically the thought that you plant a terracotta pot with water and the seedling that you plant next to it is able to extract enough moisture from this terracotta pot in order to survive, but not enough to grow lazy. So the roots of the seedling grow very, very deep and become in touch with uh, the moisture that is already in the ground. And with this uh, first thought, and traditional method, we added our own modern innovations and technology um, in order to create a, techno a planting technology for the future called the cocoon. And you see it here in use in Kenya, Africa, where we have a project. Um, and in order to explain this more clearly and, and succinctly, um, I'll show you another piece of video to explain the working of the cocoon technology. The cocoon is a 100% biodegradable tree incubator allowing trees to grow in arid soils. It's filled with 25 liters of water. The seedling is planted in the center. The cocoon prevents evaporation and the growth of weeds. The tree shelter protects the seedling from animals, 
harsh rays, and desiccating winds. The cocoon wicks drip feed water from the cocoon directly to the seedling roots. Enough water to survive, but encouraging the seedling roots to grow deep and wide in search of subsurface soil moisture. Within six to 12 months, they are independent, healthy trees that need no follow-up irrigation. Sounds simple, and actually it is that simple. Um, the Cocoon is a technology that's been up and running now for almost two years. Um, we have projects all over the world. This gives you an impression of the different countries where we're active, and this number is only growing. Um, we're in the United States, Mexico, all the way down to Australia, basically anywhere where there's degraded soil, we have business. Um, a short impression of some of our projects. This is in New Mexico in the US. Um, these seedlings are now 17 months old, uh, more than a meter tall, and have never been irrigated after planting. Uh, this is a, my favorite project, uh, our, my, our pet project in the agency. It's um, in Mexico, in Michoacan, where we are restoring the habitat of the monarch butterfly, which is an amazingly beautiful and very special um, butterfly that only can survive in this forest, the OML forest in Michoacan. Due to illegal logging and wildfires, um, this, it's a habitat it keeps shrinking. Uh, and we're working with the local communities as well as the World Wildlife Fund for Nature in order to restore um, as many hectares as we possibly can so that this butterfly can continue to live there and the communities can regain income and be able to survive off the lands again. Um, we've now planted 10,000 trees uh, and this number will hopefully grow over the next years. This is a project of ours in the Middle East. Um, we work a lot in the Middle East. This is in Saudi Arabia, where we work with local farmers. Um, as you can see, this is a moringa tree that is now over two meters tall and has grown in a completely desertified environment. Um, after planting and filling with 25 liters of water, it's never been irrigated again. Um, the roots have been able to tap into the groundwater and can survive. A uh, project in Los Angeles, uh, in the Angeles Mountains, where there was a huge wildfire, um, massive soil erosion, and nothing was really working. They kept replanting, but the seedlings kept dying. And now with the cocoon, uh, we're seeing really positive results. And this is one of our projects in Spain, so in Europe. We also work in Europe. Uh, olive and almond trees, so productive trees that we're planting there. Uh, this one is uh, almost a meter and a half tall. Uh, this is after a year and a half, so very positive results there as well. Uh, another short video just to round things off. Now is the time for smart, sustainable, and scalable solutions to heal our planet. We can do it. It's possible. We have the resources, the technology, and as a global community, there is more and more determination to heal our planet. Land Life Company, revitalizing ecosystems and communities all over the world. Great. Um, well, I hope this gave you an impression of what we do, more importantly, why we do it um, and why it's so important. Luckily, there are more and more uh, companies and initiatives that are actively finding solutions for land degradation. Uh, this is something that is key to our survival as a human people, but also important for us to realize that we have a very uh, intricate tie with nature and we must respect it. Um, yeah, and Land Life Company is hoping to do all we can to help make this happen. I hope that you have some questions or that you would like to talk more about this topic with us. Thank you all so much for your attention. Any questions? Uh, it's actually recycled paper, so similar to what you were doing yesterday, I saw you with your recycling downstairs. This is also recycled paper pulp, yes. Uh, it's completely biodegradable and then it's covered with a layer of natural wax to retain the moisture inside uh, as long as the seedling needs it in order to survive. Yes. Yeah, we, at the moment, we are producing our cocoons in Germany. 
actually. Um, we have a factory here uh, of partners that we're working with. Uh, we are actually right now um, looking to have a factory in Mexico because a lot of our business is in Latin America, a lot of projects. Uh, so we will create a local factory there so we can also offer local employment and reduce our transportation uh, as much as possible. So yeah, we are looking to build hubs in our various uh, regions. Any other questions? I thought you had a question. Can I take this? Yes, you can take that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great. We'll have a look at our website sure. as well uh, and our help. Facebook. We have lots of information as our projects continue. Mm. What's the business model behind the the installation of of the molds? Just as a regular business, we offer a service and we offer the technology. It differs per project and per partner. Uh, sometimes we are full service, so we come in, we help select the sites, we help to select seedlings, we have experts on hand to do all of those things. Uh, and then we also do the implementation and the follow-up, but we can do as required. So some agencies or NGOs are very proficient at the planting, and then we come in and we basically only deliver the technology. So it's really as needed, mm. but because we're so early in our stages, we're so dedicated to our projects, we do tend to come along and, and spend as much time as possible with partners to make sure that it's a success. So it's, it's service oriented. Does it mean then uh, <laughs> like open design or open source projects or open knowledge projects, you could actually uh, orientated in those terms? Yeah, you could. It's an interesting concept, open design. Uh, it's not something that our business is founded on as much. Mm -hmm. um, we have a patent on our design. Mm -hmm. um, it's taken our research and development team many years uh, to get it to this stage. Um, but we do hope to encourage other people to dive into this area and to um, try to make their own versions uh, of the cocoon or in similar fields. but. At the moment, we are working uh, based on the cocoon being our product and our technology. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? What are the um, um, how do you say that? The requirements for an uh, for a, for location. Well, when is a location okay, mm -hmm. and when is it absolutely not feasible? Because I guess yep. you can't plant them anywhere. That's a good question. So there is a difference between desertified land and desert. Um, a desert like the Sahara has been a desert for millions of years and there are no trees there for a reason because there is no groundwater within a distance that trees could ever tap into. So we would never plant in an existing desert, but we do plant in areas where it's desertified. So there's still groundwater available, but the topsoil has become so poor that nothing can actually portray, um, penetrate through that layer in order to get in touch with that healthy uh, soil and moisture column. Um, so we do many tests. We have arborists and ecology, ecologists on our team um, who are always looking, going there, doing soil sample tests, uh, doing research to look what, what happened 10 years ago, what did it look like 20, 30 years ago. Um, so that's a really good question. Desertified and desert, two different things. But beyond that, we can plant pretty much anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Ooh, yes. One second. Middle East? Yep. Mm -hmm. What uh, does it depend on? Uh, um, what, only one project in Kenya, was it right? We have projects what, in Kenya and yeah, South Africa as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and but very few in Africa. Is it diffi more difficult in Africa or what does it depend on? Good question as well. Um, we are two years old, that's one part of the question, so we are growing incredibly fast, but for two years, I think uh, we've got quite a portfolio, but we do hope to extend that. Um, and of course, Africa is one of our target markets with huge problems around land degradation and especially the peoples that are having to leave their lands because they can no longer live there. Um, we have a number of projects in the pipeline in Africa. There are complications about working in Africa um, to find the right partners with, to partner with. 
Do we work with local farmers? Do we work with NGOs? Where does the money go? We need to be very conscious of all of these things. Um, but I hope that if I give this presentation in a year, that there will be three, four more countries in Africa to add to the map. Anyone else? Anyone else? No. no. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Thank you very much. It was great.